So, now, with his opening statement, our first candidate, Mr. Ethan Bradbury. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces out there in the crowd, but I also see a lot of new faces, people that I haven't met before. So I'll start by introducing myself a little bit. Uh, my name's Ethan Bradbury, obviously. I've been living here in the city of historic Newcastle for my entire life, a, a whopping 28 years. Uh, it may not seem like much, but uh, I've seen a lot and I've done a lot in that time, and I hope that uh, what experience I have can benefit the city of Newcastle. In my time here, I have seen a great deal happen in this city. I've seen the good times, the bad times, ups and downs, a lot of changes, some for the better, some for the worse. But there's one consistency that I see, and that is that as a resident here, for the longest time, I had a hard time engaging with my local government. Just as a, a normal, everyday person, it wasn't to their detriment or at their fault, it just was simply that council meetings were yeah, uh, a dream almost, uh, you know. It, on a normal schedule, it became difficult to do, to interact with my local government. And that is why my primary agenda is just that, communication with all of you. I don't have an agenda because you are all my agenda what issues that you have, the things that you care about. I want to hear from every single one of you and everyone at home, everyone who couldn't attend tonight because their schedule wouldn't allow or because they were stuck at work or just because they felt unmotivated. Whatever the reason, I want to hear from all of those people and I want to make sure that all of your needs and concerns are addressed if I am elected mayor. I. I suppose that's uh, everything that I had to say. I apologize for that. Um, Thank you very much. All right, next up is Valerie Leary. Good evening, and can everybody hear me? Good evening and welcome to everyone who is seated here this evening and to those who are watching via live stream. I'd like to thank the Weekly and the Newcastle City Topics and their assistance for organizing this forum, as well as the Senior Center for providing a venue. For those of you who do not know me and for those who only know me by having seen me working at events and with numerous nonprofits over the years, I once had a long-standing career in corporate banking. I decided I wanted my work to actively improve the lives of others, and as such, I became a paramedic. I've been a paramedic for over 20 years, supporting both 911 and critical care transport. A career in public service requires excellent interpersonal skills, efficient communication, situational awareness, calmness under pressure, and adaptability, among many other skills. These skills strengthen leadership abilities and are more than applicable to our city government. My desire to protect my home value was a key factor in running for council in 2015. Unsuccessful, but not undaunted, I ran again and had the privilege of serving as a council person from 2017 to 2023. And so I was able to work collectively to help protect the value of all of our homes and businesses throughout the city. In every city, the role of the mayor is different. In Newcastle, the mayor serves not only as a face of the city, but an important link between council and residents and works to build strong relationships with key partners such as our legislative representatives, DelDOT, and other agencies. The mayor also serves as a chair of the Board of Adjustment and Board of Appeals, and also serves as one of three commissioners on MSC, as well as making a number of appointments subject to confirmation of city council. The mayor does not have a vote on city matters, although he or she can veto legislation. The key point is the mayor is a facilitator, and the key is communication and seeking a common ground for all residents. I said it last spring, and I'll say it again. The city of Newcastle is a jewel. We know this because multiple generations of families continue to live in our neighborhoods. Some move away and many return. 
Some of our neighbors were once visitors and they returned to live here as well. I am approachable and I am friendly. I have the ability to create strong, effective working relationships. I understand the importance of working as part of a multidisciplinary team and the role that clear and effective communication plays. My solid experience, expertise, and long-standing engagement with the city prepares me to assume the role of mayor, its duties and responsibilities with a minimal learning curve. I ask that you place your confidence, trust, and vote in me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And finally, Angel Ramos. Hello, everyone. Everybody can hear me. Hopefully, uh, this won't take too long. I want to uh, take this moment to thank uh, Newcastle Topics, the weekly, the Senior Center, and all that's attending here in person and on online. Let me introduce myself. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Angel B. Ramos, Jr. I've enjoyed living in the city now for over 20 years. I've enjoyed living here uh, with my wife, uh, raising our two children, and we spend many a times with family and friends. Like many of you, you've enjoyed the, the benefits of living in a small town. From separation day to an autumn to green, afternoons at Battery Park, evenings dining at our local restaurants. It's not hard to fall in love with Newcastle and its people. It's that love that has driven me to run for mayor. We are lucky to live in a, in a town with such deep connections to history, the founding of our state, and our country. My desired mission is the preservation of its history while improving and maintaining the city, city services. I feel that at this time, I'm able to apply my skills and enthusiasm to help make the city better. I proudly served the United States Marine Corps for six years. This is where I found my passion for wanting to serve others. I'm a veteran of both the Desert Storm and Gulf Wars. The Marine Corps has taught me principles of courage, honor, and integrity. These lessons I can, I can use to bring people together to get things done. I, I presently am a master HVAC technician for a me, uh, mechanical company. Being in the trade fields for over 25 years and interacting with some of our residents has helped me gain the knowledge and experience to chair and work with local and state agencies in solving some of the concerns we have in our city. The experience I've gained serving government, managing people, and time in my job and serving as state president and member of the older sons of Italy in Delaware has prepared me to be your next mayor. There's a long hard battle in front of us. I wish to bring a fresh perspective and use my team building experience to give a voice to all neighborhoods and organizations in our city. I want to take a few minutes to thank all that supported me through this new chapter in my life and to all my family and friends who never gave up on me. From my bottom of my heart, thank you very much. To all my, uh, to all my Spanish speaking friends, espero que el 5 de, de agosto vote por Angel Basilio Ramos. On August 5th, please vote for Angel B. Ramos. Thank you. So we will go, as, as Matt said, alphabetically, right? Um, Mr. Bradbury, what four city issues or projects are you looking to focus on resolving, improving, handling differently, or bringing up during your term if you win? Well, like I said, communication is a serious focus that I have. Um, I, I love the city council meetings. I think that they're a fantastic venue, and I think that they serve an important function. However, I want to focus on a more personal level and communicate in a more personal sense with all of you people out there. So I have an uh, idea for that. I'll discuss it in detail more later. Uh, I also want to address, like I said in the uh, questionnaire in the weekly, the train. I, I, I seriously, I have a very serious concern about the, the train that runs through our town, everything that it carries, everything that it... Um, yeah, everything that it's transporting is some very dangerous stuff. Traffic is, of course, obviously a great concern. Living on 8th Street, I see a lot of traffic coming through, a lot of pass-through traffic, 
and I've been watching that inflate over the many years that I've lived here. Um, as for number four, I... You don't have don't, to have four. Oh, oh, I thought you said four. It was four, <laughs> but I think that's a little specific. So oh, okay. it's, really, it's whatever issues that you find those, the most Those important. are my most important ones right now, but mainly it's whatever is important to you people. Seriously. Should I repeat the question or are you okay? Top four. It's hard to pick four. One of our major issues we have right now is the traffic going through town. I believe that we need to bring all parties under a bigger tent and force them, in as much as you can force Del Dot, to hear what we have to say about 6th Street and Ferry Cutoff. I believe that communication with them is is key because just recently we've made enough noise about Route 273 Frenchtown Road that whereas before they said there was no issue, it's now been moved up to the top. Okay. Uh, communication for uh, the city itself, uh, we've had some suggestions on a better website, on um, texting opportunities, and I believe we need to work closer with those who want to come in and develop and de for developments before before there is any shovel or studies done in the ground. We need to talk with them. Mr. Ramos? Could you repeat the question, please? Sure. Uh, what four city issues or projects are you looking to focus on resolving, improving, handling differently, or bringing up during your term if you win? Well, there are a lot of uh, a lot of concerns and issues uh, that our city faces. Traffic, everybody is suffering. Uh, I see it every day. I uh, get up in the morning around 5.30 to uh, start my day. And even at those early hours, I can see uh, traffic building up, not only the beach, uh, but just how over the years in living here, I've seen how people have used our city as a shortcut. Uh, I want to try to work uh, with Del Dot and other state agencies and even local agencies uh, to try to bring a, a solution to it. I know that uh, ferry cutoff and Route 9 is is part of uh, is part of Del Dot or the state. Uh, the flooding issue is is another major concern. Uh, this year is the first time in my lifetime living in a town where the city was almost locked down because of flooding. Uh, they need they need some resolutions for that. And I plan to work with uh, the needed agencies and people uh, to work on that. As far as development, this is a historical town. And uh, I would like to keep it that way. And I want to do my best to, uh, to work with the people prior to their uh, putting stones or, or thinking about putting buildings up so that we can uh, keep this historical. Thank you. All right, everyone. The next question is, do you think that our municipal services should be privatized? Hmm. No, I don't think that it should be. Uh, I think that leaving utilities in the hands of the, the state or the town is, is much more sensible than privatizing it. You see, I don't fault free, the free market capitalist society that we live in, but when you start to privatize systems like that, I, I think it opens up uh, a whole box of problems that we might not necessarily want to tackle at this time. We have a system, it might not be perfect, but it is one that functions and it functions safely, and uh, I think that it should be left well enough alone. Ms. Leary? The answer is no. MSC is one of the best run organizations in this town. They have redundant systems they have redundant cybersecurity. How many times have any of you had your power go out? When we have storms, we are the ones who still have power, and others outside of the city may not. These are dedicated men and women, and we do not need to privatize it in any way. Why fix something that is not broke? Mr. Ramos? Uh, I'm going to have to agree with the candidates here as well. 
I mean, I think it unanimously would feel the same way. Uh, not privatizing MSC is a very part, important part of our city, and they've, they, they, they've been doing a fantastic job and not only keeping our power uh, up and running doing bad storms, but also uh, everything else that they do for us from trash collection uh, and removing, uh, you know, the our, our, our garden debris and all that stuff. So uh, that's my answer on that. Okay, uh, Mr. Alexander and I just had a little kibitz and we decided that it's really not fair to make Ethan answer every question first. <laughs> well, and you know what I mean? So well, to, uh, to your point, I, I agree with you, because I mean, it, as he answers this question, it gives I you listen something to, to it. Think, right? It gives me something to think about, right. but how can I you know, say anything different than what my two candidates, you know, the other two candidates are speaking on? Actually, I think I, you're I all in lockstep, so it's not a bad thing. Right, exactly. So if, if, it's, if you don't mind, what I will do is I will start with Ms. Leary for the next question and end with Mr. Bradbury, then start with Mr. Romas. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, great. All right, the next question, and I will start with Ms. Leary. Barely a quarter of the voting age population of the city voted in the regular election in April. How are you trying to connect with voters, and how would you as mayor get more people involved? In every election, that has been an issue, is trying to get people out to vote. I don't know what the lack of interest is. Maybe it's the lack of information that people receive, and that's where communication may come uh, into play with people knowing more about what's going on via whatever means that we can institute to improve that. I know that going door to door, as I was going door to door this last time, there were still people who had no idea the mayor had resigned. So the get the weekly. <laughs> <laughs> so it, and town topics. So I, I believe that communication is key to informing or at least getting information out to as many people as possible, so then they can make a choice about being involved and getting them involved. This is your city. This is your city. We're listening to what you're saying, but you've got to tell us. We don't read minds, Mr. Ramos. My plan is to uh, reach out to the citizens, give them an opportunity to have a, a venue or, or uh, access to get their, their concerns early in advance uh, to city council. Because sometimes when these guys sit down and they, they hear all the concerns that the city has, sometimes they get that information last minute and doesn't give them an opportunity to think about what these concerns are and really you know implement them and try to resolve them so communication is definitely key uh, it's, it's either uh, through the weekly or online uh, online the you know right now technology has 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 become so abundant that uh, it just takes a, a few tapping of the keyboard to uh, for you to gain access to any kind of information uh, I also will, will also provide uh, and encourage our citizens uh, to show up to the meetings. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to see this group show up at our council meetings and any other meetings that, that are available? Uh, you guys obviously are, are, are concerned enough to, uh, to come out and hear us speak. You need to come out and, hear, and, and talk to the councilman as well. Mr. Bradbury? Oh, yes, I touched on this in, in uh, one of the previous questions, communication, obviously. But to that end, um, my candidates have been speaking about technology, the wonders of technology and the convenience that it represents, the ability to communicate at uh, you know lightning speeds. And I think that is fantastic. But I also think that taking a step backwards, in a way, uh, using a, a tried and true method. We live in a small town, and there are benefits that go along with that. And one of the benefits is, is just this, ha having a significant you know portion of the population here interested in, in discussing and I think that should be done much more regularly during uh, my term if I were elected I would reestablish open forums just like this where I can discuss issues one-on-one -on -one with people if need be or in groups I think that it represents like I said having such a small town you know where there's not millions and millions of people living here I can get one-on-one -on -one with so many of you and really make a difference in your lives individually 
Mr. Ramos? Start. No, no, we're going to start with the next question. I'm, I, we're doing a little down the lane. I apologize. That's, I know it's a little confusing. but uh, Okay. In the Q&A, you shared similar thoughts about service. You all did. Uh, but all candidates rightly need to answer why they're really running. How do you convince people this is not a vanity project or an ego trip or a control trip or whatever? Well, everybody's got to know me uh, as I put my name uh, for election to run for mayor. This is my first experience in, in, in the political realm, so I, I'm, I'm more of a, an outsider coming in. And I want to bring a, a fresh perspective. There's things that I've learned over life uh, that has helped me uh, talk to people, gather them, and, uh, and gather them together for a common goal. Uh, my reason to run for mayor is for the people. I honestly feel I don't have an ego because it's not about me. Like I said on my questionnaire, this is about a village. It takes a village to make things work. It takes a village to, to prosper and make the city new. Mr. Bradley, would you like me to repeat the question? Why I wanted to run for mayor? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I also said earlier, I have lived here my entire life and I've seen a lot happen in this town. I've, I mean, I've loved living here. I've, I think back to my childhood and, and enjoying the Halloweens here in the town when everyone would get their houses dressed up. And uh, what a fantastic, I mean, what a fantastic community we live in, seriously. And I, I think that, um, I think that we've kind of, we haven't gotten away from it, but at, since COVID, everyone's gotten just a little bit more insulated. Uh, and I, I mean, I want to try and break people out of that. I want to see our community thrive again like it used to. I want to see Separation Day just completely go off the charts. I want, I want everyone to feel like that we're one big family here. A and kind of the way I felt when I was younger. That's, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Ms. Larry? This goes back to um, when I initially chose not to run again for city council. However, my desire to get involved with the city at the mayor's level came from a column I read in the February 22nd weekly and I was like, uh-oh, I know that a lot of people are not going to agree with a lot of these things. and. I've already said I wasn't going to run for council again, so I guess it's mayor. But, you know, also running for mayor would enable the, me to just continue my service to the city and leverage information that I already know, leadership, my strong relationships I've already built with a lot of our key stakeholders, and I feel that I can continue to benefit the city in this way. Thank you. Mr. Bradbury, we'll start with the next question. <laughs> Did we do that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if elected, what steps will you take to understand and represent the needs of residents in neighborhoods other than where you live? Well, I, as someone who lives in, you know, on 8th Street, kind of bordering on, you know, Shawtown and, and Dobbinsville and, and that area, I, I definitely know what it's like to live in an area that's sort of outside of the core of historic Newcastle. And, um, uh, to that end, I, I, I think that um, I think that my I think a lot of people don't show up to things like city council because it, it conflicts with schedules. And they're held on weekdays. People are uh, have trouble getting to them after work, or even if they're even off of work to begin with. And it's I I think my for, again my forum idea. I want to hold them on weekends. I want to hold them at times when people anyone can attend. And I want it to be informal. I want it to be friendly and. Uh, uh, apart from that traditional outreach, I would love to go door to door and speak to those people, uh, set up a, an email or use all the technology that, uh, that everyone is talking about. But, um, but really, I think face-to-face -face communication is, is what needs to be done. You need, if you want to convince someone to be a part of a system, you need to stand there, shake their hand, look them in the eye, and tell them that it's a good idea. Thank you. Ms. Leary? Our surrounding neighborhoods have a lot of the same issues. Their roads, maybe they need speed bumps, maybe they need their curbs redone. 
we all have the same amenities. We have our water, we have our gas, we have our electric, we have our trash service pickup. What else do our communities need? Do communities have special needs? Uh, Dobbinsville, while I was a council person, we dealt with some specific issues for Dobbinsville regarding potholes and stuff that they had there. What does Boothurst need? I know right now they're looking at getting their roads redone. What does Buttonwood need? Do they need sidewalks? Do they need their roads redone? But all of our amenities, water, electric, gas, all of those we are all getting together. Communication is key. I would love to improve communication in our neighborhood so that we have, just like everybody said, more people show up to these meetings. You are all interested in who's going to be your next mayor. All of you, every community should be interested in what's coming down the road or what's going on in the city. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. Can you repeat that question, please? I sure can. Uh, if elected, what steps would you take to understand and represent the needs of residents and neighborhoods other than your own? Well, other than the neighborhoods I, in my own, you know, as I as been walking around and talking to people, I do get the sense that some of, some of the people outside of the historic area feel disconnected. And uh, what I would like to do on my, if I get elected as mayor is to bring those people together. Uh, either by forums or if I go door to door. Um, I spend a lot of times in evenings, usually uh, I try not to sit at home too much. I like walking around the town. I like walking around different neighborhoods and interacting with people and just seeing the condition of, of each, uh, each community. You know, so the improvement of roads, the improvement of, of just the lifestyle in our area is something that I want to focus on and bring people together to do so. Thank you. Uh, actually, yes, we're starting with Ms. Leary. <laughs> uh, have you accepted any donations of funds or materials for your campaign? And if so, how do you approach the issue of donor influence should you win office? I have received two donations. That's it. I don't see them as having any influence. I see them as helping to offset the cost of the elections um, as anyone who's run for office, there's the cost of signage, there's the cost of door hangers, there's the, the cost of anything you're putting out there to help with your campaign. And I do, I know that the two donations I received, which did not exceed $100 each, um, were for those items and they're not for any influence at all. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. Uh, up to this point, I haven't received any donations. Um, it's not that I, I'm avoiding it, but i taken on this project uh, to be your next mayor. I took it upon myself as, as something that I learned in my life to handle all expenses uh, for my campaign. Uh, it's very important to me that, uh, that if I do receive any donations, I make it clear that this is not uh, for any kind of favors or anything like that. I'm totally against that. I mean, we've seen uh, throughout our, you know, our lives here in our country as the national, you know, uh, politicians uh, get their donations. Sometimes they, uh, it comes with uh, favors. And unfortunately, you know, it, it, uh, it damages that candidate uh, and it forces that person to, to make decisions that normally they would not do. So I, I, I'm grateful for donations if they do come, um, but I, uh, I'm, for lack of better words, I don't like people to be in, I don't want to be in anybody's pocket. Thank you, Mr. Bradbury. Uh, I too accepted no donations. Uh, I did accept a donation from my parents for a, a little bit of help with my signs, but uh, I'm not sure if that counts. <laughs> um, obviously, like, like everyone else up here, I, I'm vehemently against uh, uh, quid pro quo donations and uh, you know buyouts and things like that. I, I think that politics gets, generally speaking, politics gets pretty dicey when it comes to money and uh, influence and uh, you know, policy, but um, no, I, I, 
in a, in a town like this, there's there's really no need for any of that. I think that uh, we can manage just fine on, on my own. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Ramos, we're going to start with you on this one. This is the last question before intermission. What processes or services of the city do you think need to be updated to serve modern working people better, and do you have any ideas for that? That's a good question. Thank you. Uh, the services that we have uh, are good. Everybody's happy with them. There hasn't been any complaints that I've heard from uh, my time knocking on doors and speaking on people. Uh, obviously, there there is always room for improvement. Uh, we live in the 21st century, so everything is becoming uh, electronic. You know, uh, people use their their smartphones to. Uh, to turn on and off their air conditioning systems nowadays, to turn their lights on, uh, to, as a matter of fact, I've seen uh, where somebody used technology to cut their own grass because they don't want to do it anymore. So there, there's always room for improvements. Uh, and if elected, uh, I want to share those ideas and bring the community together so they get, they can get properly informed because sometimes, you know, things get implemented uh, and not too many people know about it, but I, I, I feel that is very important, especially when it comes to modernizing and improving our services, that the community should be involved. Thank you, Mr. Bradbury. Uh, one more time with the question. Uh, yes, what processes or services of the city do you think need to be updated to serve modern working people? And what ideas might you have for that? Yes, well, huh, that is a good question. Uh, obviously, everything needs to continue to, to change as, as we change as a community, as the times change, uh, technology advances and everything is brought up to uh, par with that as time goes on. But um, uh, as I've said time and time again, the most important thing is ensuring that we don't lose the personal touch when we're, when we're talking about the services and, and the, and just the people in the town in general, there's, we just need to make sure that in all of this um, wealth of technology and this 21st century uh, madhouse we live in, that we all continue to be each other's neighbors, and that includes your uh, representatives in local government as well. That's the, really the only thing that I would want to focus on. Everything else is, would be on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. Ms. Leary, before you answer, I just want to remind the audience that this is the last time you have to actually write out a question because we will be in the back sorting out those questions during intermission. So if you have a question, please enter it right now. I'm sorry. Please. Repeat the question. I was listening to you. <laughs> what processes or services of the city do you think need to be updated to serve modern working people better, and what ideas might you have for doing that? You can buy a house online with an e-signature. You pay your car insurance, your health insurance, everything online. You can pay your MSC bill online. We pay our taxes online. So I believe that while communication is at the forefront of all this and the personal touch is very good, for the everyday aspects of business in the city, you should be able to do it online. For the most part, we're pretty good about that. Um, I am waiting for my meter from MSC to be replaced so I don't have to give them the meter reading, but we know that's coming and many of you out there are the same way. But I do believe technology should be used to the benefit and should be used carefully and that we should still work for the personal touch. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you all back in how many minutes, Matt? Uh, about, 10 minutes. about 10 minutes. So we'll get through as many of these as we can. The first round that we're going to do, we're asking the candidates just to give a quick 30-second answer. You don't have to go into, you know, uh, a whole lot. Um, do you think our city needs to build a municipal complex? 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on, hang on. I'm working on it. There we go. Testing. Hello. Uh, no. 
30 seconds. No. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm trying to give you the 30 second ones, but I don't know. Uh, okay, so uh, since we started with Mr. Bradbury, we'll start with Ms. Leary. Okay, have you all voted in previous elections? How many? If not, why not? I have voted in all the elections since I lived here. And how long has that been? Since 2007. I may have missed the first one, in, if there was one in 2007. Okay. But other than that, I have voted ever since. Mr. Ramos? I voted in uh, a few of the elections uh, since uh, 2020. Uh, I've missed some of them because of my work constraint. Sometimes uh, I haven't been able to come in, but I made it a point that when I'm available, I did vote. Thank you, Mr. Bradbury. Uh, I have, but only recently and, and only one, and I'll be honest with you, uh, the reason is obviously there were work constraints once upon a time, but before then I was but a child. I, you know, I, I didn't. <laughs> uh, but it's true. When I was, I mean, how many high schoolers do you know go out or, or you know, 18, 19 somethings are going to run out and vote? It just, it just never sprung to the top of my list. I cared enough and I tried to keep informed, but I, I never made it to the poll and perhaps in retrospect that wasn't the best thing to do. But, you know, um, I'm trying to make up for some lost time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think we're starting with Mr. Ramos now. How do you feel about the idea of parking meters in the historic district? Well, the city needs to grow. The city needs to gain, uh, I'll be fine ways to uh, have revenue to, to try to reduce the, uh, the tax burden on our citizens. So I don't think, it, I think it would be a good idea uh, to have parking meters because it'll, it, it one, it'll alleviate uh, the people that come in, especially out of, from out of town, and they take up a space, and they're there for hours, hours at a time. Thank you, Mr. Bradbury. I, I see in my head, I see good points for both yes and no. And I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm not sure if I have an answer to that question, so I suppose before enacting a policy, I would look to all of you. I would try and feel the room and see uh, what the general consensus was on it because at the end of the day, it's going to be impacting we as a community more than anyone else. If, if the people say that it's a good idea, then so would I. Thank you. Ms. Leary? I believe it would be a city consensus. However, there are so many facets to this and it has been discussed over the years. You don't need a parking meter at every parking spot. You can put in a tower and people go to it. People have seen these in DC. You can have permits for people who live here. There's, but there is something to be said for being able to have some income from our visitors to help with the burden of taking care of our streets and our parks and such like that. But a lot of, a lot of facets, a lot of discussion, and it would need to involve the communities. Thank you. We're going back to Mr. Bradbury to start the next question. This is the last 30 second question. We put up a large banner across Delaware Street advertising Separation Day, which is great. It reminds tourists and residents alike, can we have banners for elections too? They would serve as a daily reminder for residents to vote as they drive through. What do you think of that idea? I think that's a capital idea. <laughs> Getting everyone, you know, a big old sign, everyone sees it. I think the, the what happens is is that people get lost in their day-to-day -day, the you know the routines that they have and the election day comes and goes and then they look back a week later and go oh oops I meant to vote uh, you know so something there that is big and present and and hopefully colorful and interesting looking will uh, <laughs> will help to motivate and remind people that the option is there for them thank you Ms. Larry the banner across Delaware Street a good good idea but also I think we could expound upon that and put them out a couple other places in town to uh, remind people Mr. Ramos I think it's a great idea to use the billboards uh, to not only uh, announce the uh, events that we have here in our city we have a lot of awesome events from separation day to order the green to the concert the summer concerts in, in town uh, and if a candidate is running for an elected uh, position, 
uh, they should be able to, to use the billboard as well to, to announce it so that everybody knows. Thank you. No, it's going to go to you, Ms. Leary. <laughs> um, this is not a written question. I had uh, uh, an audience member come up and, and, and ex try and explain uh, her, her concern, and so I'm going to do the best I can. Forgive me if I haven't done this well. Uh, her concern is the lack of diversity in Newcastle. She doesn't feel that African Americans are represented on council uh, or in, in, in city politics or even in this room. So I, I, I know that's a really difficult question and I apologize. If you need a minute instead of 30 seconds, please take it. Ms. Leary, what would you, what would you like to see happen uh, to increase diversity in Newcastle? We keep coming back to the topic of communication and informing people and getting the news out there. So I believe that increasing diversity means communicating to everyone in the city, to all of our neighborhoods. It is incumbent upon people to want to get involved. It is, we can have it in the paper, we can have it uh, online, you can have it on a billboard, you can have it everywhere. But it is incumbent upon the individual to want to get involved. And I encourage everyone to get involved, and I have for years, reaching out to your council people, reaching out to your city administration. But I believe, again, comes down to communication and getting the message for everything out to every person. Excuse me, as a mayor candidate, that is not the answer. I'm sorry, you can't debate their answers. This is simply a candidate forum. It's and not. Ma'am, be... ma'am, we said no heckling from the back, and we meant it. It will not be tolerated. I apologize, Mr. Ramos. Well, this country has been. This country was uh, was based on diversity. Diversity is what's made this country great. Every, every aspect of, of very different cultures that we become a melting pot. And all these ideas that everybody brings in from their cultures has made not only our city great, but has made America great. So what my plan is to get people involved. Again, the topic of communication. It seems, it seems like that is an is a ongoing topic. Communication is key, whether it is online, through the paper, or even or even face-to-face -face conversations. Like I say, I, I, I enjoy walking around, I enjoy seeing the faces and meeting people and hearing and hearing what they have to say. And my and what I would like to do is to get them more involved. Say, hey, you know, it, the way I see it, if, if I find somebody that is, that is a good candidate for any kind of committee or position in our city, and he's Afro-American or brown, white, pink, whatever you are, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it make it so that you, that you at least have the opportunity to, to run for that position. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Mr. Bradbury. Well, I'll start by saying that obviously I'm a firm believer in equality of opportunity amongst all different peoples, no matter where they come from or, or um, you know whence they hail or their family or. Uh, uh, social status or race or ethnicity or gender or any which way uh, I think that everyone I think that there should be no walls obstructing anyone from attempting to attain their goals I, I mean uh, look at me I'm I'm up here running for mayor I'm obviously not accustomed to this sort of thing I'm inexperienced to say the least I'm young and uh, I'm, I'm up here and I'm trying to make a difference and I want to make sure that every person has the opportunity to make a difference if they want to. But it is up to them to, to also put the effort in and to come out and, and make the difference. Opportunity, that's, yeah. Thank you. We'll, we'll be starting with Mr. Ramos. Mr. Ramos. Uh, what is the mayoral role in flood protection? These are one-minute answers. 
if you fear those are role? I mean, it's obviously. Well, I, I feel that the mayor's role is to be, uh, to be well informed so that he can share whatever uh, solutions or even possible, uh, possible solutions to try to deal with the flooding. Uh, his role is to uh, get the community involved. Everybody knows we have a flooding issue. And I feel that uh, all of us should to be involved and, and voice, voice our concerns. Because right now there's too many, there's too many projects that have been put in the back burner for whatever reason that they were. They need to be brought in the forefront because we all saw what the flooding did to us last time. Obviously, we don't want that to happen again. Thank you, Mr. Bradbury. One more time. Uh, what is the mayor's role in flood protection? As a coordinator, I suppose would be my answer. Um, the mayor's role in flood protection, um, apart from apart from the obvious uh, falling back on the communication front, it, it, it's. I suppose it would be the mayor's job to coordinate with uh, agencies and and uh, and companies and other institutions from outside of our city in order to help fix or alleviate or. Um, relieve the issue when it arises. I mean, flooding is a constant thing in our town, and I think that the solution to that is a little bit larger than just the city of historic Newcastle. But I, I would be very keen on pursuing those endeavors uh, in my term if I were elected. Thank you, Ms. Larry. I see the, <clears throat> excuse me, I see the mayor as a facilitator in all of this. We do have a sea level rise committee that's going on right now, but that is dealing with overall. However, recently we did see the uh, uh, flooding that occurred on North Route 9. We see it South Route 9. We saw it on uh, 273. There are some solutions or at least ideas for solutions that, that a mayor can bring forward. They can reach out to the agencies to their legislat legislative representatives to help facilitate some of these things. We've been working, I haven't as I've been off council, but we have been working with DelDOT on South Route 9 with a temporary solution for uh, some repaving right there. And uh, there was somebody here in the audience who brought to us just last week uh, at the last council meeting uh, overheads of what the uh, area looked like uh, at North 273 years ago where there are many tributaries that are now grown over and need to be cleared. Thank you. And we're going to start with Mr. Bradbury for the next question. I, unfortunately, I didn't call the duplicates here. There are a number of these. Um, did anyone ask or urge you to run for mayor? And if so, whom? If elected, what obligation do you feel to follow their advice regarding appointments and other official matters? I would feel uh, uh, I would feel no obligation. Um, I've made it clear to there have been a couple of people who who asked me who told me that it would it might be a good idea for me to run, but I also made it clear to them at the time that I'm my own person. I have my own opinions and my own priorities. Uh, it's important for politicians to remain hmm, objective when looking at when looking at the, the, the problems of the town and when dealing with people on an individual basis, I can't in good conscience uh, show favoritism towards uh, an individual or a party of people. Um, it, it, just, it just goes against my very, you know, uh, the fiber of my very character. Thank you, Ms. Larry. As most all of you know, this is the second time running for mayor. And I had made up my own mind to run for mayor the first time and I made up my own mind to run for mayor the second time. Certainly there have been people who supported, who came forward and said, hey, are you going to run again? That's not the same thing as someone coming out directly and saying, you need to run, we want you to run for X. But no, I'm pretty independent on all of this. So thank you, Mr. Ramos. <clears throat> well, to answer that question, I've been approached by uh, city members and, my, and, and other people in, in the community, uh, not only this time around, uh, but when the elections were uh, back in April for council position. 
And at the time, I felt that I needed to gain a little bit more uh, knowledge of the in and outs of the city. I felt that uh, I needed to become more abreast uh, and attuned to what are the concerns of the city. Not to say that I, I was in the dark, because I keep, kept myself very informed, not only with the weekly, but the, the online up, uh, ability for me to stay on top of the current events. So I, did have, I do have great su uh, support uh, from Mike Platt, uh, Pete Toner, who's with the trustees, and other uh, elected officials, that once they knew that I was running, that they came and gave me their support. But none of them, I would say, that came up and said, yo, you'd be a good man for mayor. I think it was something that it, when it was told to me, I take this position very seriously. So when it was told to me, I wanted to make sure that I would prepare myself properly for it. Thank you, sir. Uh, I believe you're next. Uh, How will you balance the role of mayor, the priorities of mayor, and the power of the trustees with council and other constituents? I think that's a little twisted um, I, I, because the mayor has no role at all in the trust. Uh, so perhaps it's the role of mayor, the priorities, working with council and working with the trustees. How do you plan to do that? So we're leaving the trustees out of it? Well, no, I'm saying, I, and, I, and I apologize that I'm interpreting for someone, uh, because as I said, the mayor and council have nothing to do with the trustees except as partners in many ways in your council. It says, how balance the role of mayor priorities and pr power of trustees with council and other constituents? So let's just say, how do you plan to collaborate as a mayor with council and the trust? Does that make sense? The mayor and the council are the governing, well the council is the governing body, the mayor can veto legislation but does not have a vote as I previously mentioned. The trust, we are lucky to have the trust. The trust is a partner in many of the things here in the city and we need to keep a good relationship and work with them for the benefit of all the residents from the mayor and the council and the trust. Thank you. Mr. Ramos? I feel that's important that we all work together, uh, not only city council, but with the trustees as well. Working together is what makes the city great. If there's uh, diversiveness or, or, you know, disagreements, I'm sure we all can sit down and talk civil, civilly and, and reach an amicable uh, solution that will be the good and the betterment for our city. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bradbury? Well, I suppose as, as just a, a mediator, I, like they, I've been told, or like, I, like has been said already, the mayor doesn't really have any, um, any direct authority over, uh, over any of these bodies, but it's important that we're all keeping the best interests of the city at heart, and we're all striving towards a singular greater good for our town and the people within it. Uh, as long as that's happening, then I don't see any reason why everyone can't get along and work peacefully and cooperatively towards that very goal. Um. Okay, thank you. We're going to start the next question with Mr. Ramos. I promise I'm keeping count. I swear. Okay. Uh, okay, this is, uh, uh, I was going to say, this is a really good question, I'm sorry. Uh, the three candidates tonight have repeated and agreed that Newcastle needs better communication. Uh, would you please specify what channels, frequency, and outbound and inbound communication you plan? Well, the frequency and the outbound communication would be, one, to use our uh, social media, use our local paper, and, and the face-to-face. You know, face to face, believe it or not, uh, it's it's so important. Not in, not only to me, because you could you know you can get information passed through the paper, to social media outlets, but believe it or not, talking to somebody face to face uh, makes it more important, and it it helps it, for me personally anyway 
to focus on that and pass those me that message along uh, to council or, or anybody else that needs to know. Thank you, Mr. Bradbury. One-on-one -on -one communication. Um, there, like I said, we live. We have the benefit of living in, in such a, a small community, of a beautiful little town here. I could know all of you and everyone at home. And what better balance of in and out would there be than just having a conversation? If someone has a concern, if someone has an issue, I want to hear about it. I want to be able to give them feedback immediately. And if I can't resolve their problem, I want to take down their information. I want to be able to contact them personally and and make it happen. I want to I want to make a solution happen for whatever issues that people might be having, one on one. Thank you, Ms. Leary. One on one is an ideal way to communicate but it doesn't cover many people at one time. So we do have to reach out with social media to our paper, city topics, your mailer and your electric bill, maybe emergency text pages that may have gone out about that horrible odor the other night. I don't know if anyone else got that. But one-on-one -on -one is good. It, it is good. It's it, emailing your council people, emailing your mayor, emailing your city administrator, that is always a direct line. But to reach the masses, we do have to utilize social media. On occasion, a letter from the city coming out to everyone's mailbox may be a good idea, but that is costly for the city if we do it too many times. So, but one-on-one, -on -one, like I said, great social media follows a close second. Thank you. Well, we started with Mr. Bradbury now with the next question. As mayor, you will be tasked with making many appointments and decisions regarding the MSC. How will you use your experience, what experience, uh, to better serve you to do so? I have to admit, um, I don't think I have an answer to this question at the moment. Um, I. I understand that there's a lot that goes into dealing with MSC and the role of the mayor, but I, I'm I'm not experienced enough. I would have to learn on the I would have to learn as I go in, but um, I I would be willing to to do that obviously and and give it my all and and try to fill the role as best I can. But it would require a lot more uh, digging into research and preparation than than what I have uh, prepared for this evening. I'm afraid, um, but just know that. I would apply myself wholeheartedly to any situation that arises in office if I were elected. Um, can you keep the microphone for just a moment? I'm going to expand on that just a little bit because I think I understand the spirit of the question. I don't know if it's necessarily uh, just about MSC, but basically making appointments to, you know, how will you choose to make appointments to our planning commission, oh, oh, to okay. other, to all of the, you know, commissioners. Oh, uh, as for just the making of appointments in general, I would, you know, uh, go through each candidate and, and find the most qualified individuals based off of merit rather than anything else. I mean, we want the best people in the positions to do the best job that they can. It only benefits the city and the people within it. So. Uh, merit and strength of character are the most important qualities that I'll be looking for in making appointments. Great, thank you. Ms. Leary? I think all of our commissions benefit from having members from throughout the community. Some people are a little afraid to reach out and say, hey, I'd like to do this, and it takes us going to them. So again, we come to communication and finding out about members of the community who may be interested in this, or sometimes you may know someone who has a talent, a merit, as he said, that you can ask to be on one of the commissions. All commission appointments are subject to confirmation by city council. So you do your best to find your best candidates and bring them in. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I would think they the uh, what I bring is is my leadership and team building experience that I've had, not only in the uh, trades uh, but in my military background. You know, it's very important to to pick and notice the people that you know will do a good job, and work on, and work on those talents that they have. Those talents that they have can help improve the city and make our life here even better. So as I go through uh, to make appointments, like it's been said, 
You know, I'll see what their qualifications is. I'll see what they bring to the table. And if it's something that I feel that it will better the city, I will definitely, you know, pass it on, make sure that council is aware of that person and, uh, and, make, the, and make the needed uh, moves so that, that he or she uh, can hold those positions. Thank you, sir. Ms. Leary, you'll be starting the next question. How much time do we have? Any more questions? One more question, then final statement. Uh, there are many here. <laughs> Sorry. We, try, we tried to call them down, but you have a lot of questions, and that's a wonderful thing. How will you maintain the historic fabric of this community? As one of my um, illustrious compatriots up here mentioned is that this is where our state was founded. And right there in the room where it happened on Delaware Street, anybody get the Hamilton reference, is right where we became a state and where we separated ourselves from Great Britain. We have homes, we have roads, and I believe that the Historic Area Commission is certainly in charge of the external part of our buildings here and works extraordinarily hard to try to maintain that historic ambiance. I don't foresee extraordinary development in the historic area of the city. And I believe that any development anywhere, anyhow, is to be done in a controlled, precise, manner with a great deal of thought. Great. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. I'm a big uh, history enthusiast. I love history. And my job as, as your mayor is to do my best to preserve that history. Yes, we want to see growth in our city, but there's a reason why historic Newcastle is known as historic Newcastle. It needs to be stayed that way and protect what we have here already. You know, inform the people, have them have them grow to a love of what this this city not only has done in the past, but what it's getting ready to do in the future. Thank you, Mr. Bradbury. I too have a great love for history. I, I study history and archaeology at the University of Delaware. I have a huge passion for history and. Not, I mean, not just history, but the history of this town specifically. Obviously, growing up here and living here my whole life, I've, uh, I feel deeply connected to it and its historical and cultural roots. And to that end, um, I definitely feel that it needs to be preserved. However, until I get into the position and, and really start to go over what's what's being done and, and what can be improved on, uh, I can't make a, uh, just a blanket statement on how I would do better, but just know that I would try to do better. I would try to keep the, the cultural and historical fabric of the town intact as best I can. Thank you. I think we're starting with Mr. Ramos next, is that right? It is. This is a roundup question. So what, what Matt and I had decided was that this question uh, asked one by one of the audience members is kind of a wrap up. So what we're going to ask you to do is answer the, the question. It's a very simple question. And uh, use two minutes or so to actually wrap up anything else you want to say to the rest of the audience and voters. So there's okay. no closing statement after this question? No, this will be your closing Thank statement you. and, your, and your final question. Uh, if elected mayor, what would your number one priority be to focus on? Now. They give a couple of examples, but as we know, there are many. They give traffic issues, flooding, and issues in surrounding neighborhoods. So, uh, but you can choose whichever you think your priorities are. It was just a suggestion there. Yeah, there's so many issues that we're facing here in our city. You know, we like to get around. We like to be able to know that when we leave our homes, uh, there's not going to be any barriers uh, to stop that. So. You know, the traffic, the flooding, uh, is, is obviously on top of my list. Uh, development is also on top of my list. As, again, this is a historical town, and I feel that we need to keep it that way. It, it, I, I love the fact that we can develop and grow the city, but uh, in my personal opinion, in doing too much development, 
it, 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 it almost hides the fact that we are a historical town. Uh, as your mayor, I want to do my best to focus on all these things, and I, I ask for your vote on August 5th. Thank you. Mr. Bradbury? I, too, have a number of, uh, of concerns that rise to the top of my list. Um, obviously, the traffic has been plaguing this city for as long as I've lived here. As long as I've been alive, it's been a, a recurring issue, uh, gradually increasing in severity. But one that I would like to draw attention to is one that a lot of people, especially those who don't live in and around it, might not be aware of, and that's the, the train that runs through our town. It is, and I, and I wrote about this in the, in the weekly, uh, the train is a menace, not only because of the noise pollution it creates, but if you look around the country in recent, in recent months, in recent years, the number of derailments of similar trains has gone up and up and up because safety standards are plummeting at these rail companies. They're sending trains, 200 plus cars, through little towns just like ours, and when they turn over, it's not just the streets around it that are impacted, it destroys entire cities. And something has to be done to regulate these things. Uh, I think that it's a, a very real issue. And you know, you never think it's going to happen to you. You never think it'll be near you until the day that it is. So it's important to address that and make sure that the city can remain safe and that everything can continue operating smoothly. Um, uh, apart from that, uh, I know that a lot of people have questions that they didn't get answered tonight, and I just want everyone here to know that, um, for me personally, if you ever have a question and you want to ask me, just come up to me. I Actually, that's a really good reminder for all the candidates because the city does provide emails and, and whatnot, so please do reach out if just, your questions were yeah, send, send me an email. Come up to me in person. A lot of people see me out and about. I, I recognize a great many faces in here. If you have something you want to discuss with me, just come up and talk about it. I'm really quite personable. <laughs> we can see that. Thank you, Thank Ms. You. Leary. Again, my compatriots have brought up a number of issues that are at the top of the list. Traffic, flooding, the train, and we've all hit upon communication all evening long. As your mayor, I'd be able to continue to work with and help facilitate working toward possible solutions for some of these. I'm familiar with WOMAPCO and the plans that they have for uh, Route 9 ferry cutoff. I was working with DelDOT regarding the flooding on South Route 9. I've brought up now uh, the dredging of the tributaries. Thank you, Mr. Emery. Uh, that we had no idea that there had been all these tributaries and now they're overgrown and and I we can bring that up and we can get that resolved so flooding certainly and we've seen that the train again I get caught by that train and I've been trying to count the cars going by and they're supposed to stop at a hundred I'm not sure they do though because I kind of lose count after a certain time because it's very hypnotizing but it is true that we are, we will be completely cut off this in not just the historic area but all of our communities on the other side because a derailment affects everyone around here and we need to figure out a way we cannot impede commerce there are laws for that so we have to figure out a way to work with Delaware City refinery which is where most of them are coming from and find some sort of solution with that and in closing, what I can say is I have, it's been very fun and entertaining and my compatriots here have been great, but I'm the only one sitting here who has six years of experience on city council and has been actively engaged in the city for a number of years. And I have already made solid relationships with many of our key partners and I ask for your vote on August 5th. Thank you. Thank you and thank you everyone for coming.